Hey guys, Mish here, and today I have a video for you that sort of gets back to my roots with this channel, which is going over studies related to eating carbs versus fat and weight loss and that kind of thing. So if you haven't seen, there's all these anecdotes of people talking about how they used to gain weight eating 1500 calories on a normal diet, and then they switched over to high carb veganism, which means like a ton of fruit and starch and carbs and magically be able to eat double the amount and lose weight. There are a lot of studies that look at very similar things and very relevant things that can help us answer the question of whether or not it's possible and if it is, how in the world they do it. And today I have a study for you that looks at how much sugar people can turn into fat when they're being overfed, so eating a lot of extra calories that would usually make them gain lots of weight. So in this study they had 13 subjects and had them hang out in a whole body calorimeter and that allowed the researchers to measure exactly what people were burning in terms of carbs versus fats versus protein and how much energy they were expending. And while in that room, they had the participants do three different diets for four days each, and the researchers strictly controlled their sleep, rest, exercise, and meals. So it's a very strongly controlled study. So of those subjects, about half of them were obese and half of them were a healthy weight, or called lean by the researchers. And they had three dietary treatments, as it's called, so three different diets they put these people on for four days each. So they did a maintenance diet, which they used to determine what participants generally burnt off in a day. So they just had participants eat sort of a standard weight maintaining diet at the level of calories that they needed in order to maintain their weight. And that maintenance diet had around 50% carbs, 40% fat, and 10% protein. So kind of a standard-ish American macronutrient ratios. So just kind of a normal diet. And then they had two overfeeding diets. What they did is they took a control diet and then they added a bunch of sugary drinks and oil and butter, essentially, so that they ate 50% more than they needed. So the overfeeding diets ended up being about 50% carbs, 42% fat, and 8% protein. So they did four days on maintenance, four days on the overeating diet where the sugar came from glucose, and four days on another overeating diet where the sugar came from sucrose. So just for an example breakdown to make it more concrete and for people who are interested in the numbers that people were eating, one example subject they gave ate 1,900 calories a day. They ate 240 grams of carbs, 86 grams of fat, and 56 grams of protein. And then, for the overfeeding diet, they were given an additional 950 calories on top of that. And that consisted of an extra 540 calories of sugar, which is 135 grams, and 450 calories of fat, which is about 50 grams. On average, these people were overeating by like 500 calories of sugar, plus about 500 calories of fat. So they're eating a lot of extra sugar and fat, in addition to a normal-ish diet. And this study provides a nice cautionary note for people who read studies and take away conclusions from the title, because the title of the study strongly suggests that they were just overfeeding the participants with sugar, but in reality they also gave them fat. So study title should always be taken with a grain of salt, pun sort of intended. But what they were mostly interested in was what happened to the sugar they ate. What this study was mainly focused on was a process called de novo lipogenesis, which is where you turn carbs into fat. And de novo lipogenesis is what a lot of anti-carb people point to to say, look, carbs make you fat, because look, you can turn these carbs into fat, you store them on your body, and therefore all that sugar you eat is going straight to your thighs or whatever they say. This study has a lot of cool results and a lot of numbers that I'm going to be sharing with you because they are really, really shocking, and I think you will enjoy having numbers to tell people if you want some shock factor in there. So the first interesting tidbit that the authors actually don't talk about but is in their numbers is the fact that participants' energy expenditure actually went up about 300 calories on the overfeeding diet. So it seems like their metabolisms were able to compensate for some of the extra calories. And that's especially interesting because, remember, they had controlled activity and meals. So they completely controlled what participants ate and had them on a schedule for sleeping and resting and exercise and everything, even like bathroom trips, I think. So. It was not just because they were exercising more or something, it was really just that their bodies were burning off a lot of those extra carbs, probably, as we'll go to. And as just a little result for people who are thinking, oh no, they're eating a bunch of sugar, they're gonna get diabetes and die, their insulin and blood sugar did not change with the overfeeding. So even getting an extra 500 calories a day of sugar, for example, did not do much. So now on to the main de novo lipogenesis results. And as a reminder, this is when you're converting carbs like sugar into fat, so that you can store it on your body. And in the overfeeding conditions, where they gave them an extra 500 calories of sugar and 500 calories of fat, people's de novo lipogenesis doubled. And so what this means is that when people were overfed, their rate at which they're converting carbs into fat increases. So this is not surprising because 
presumably that is the process that's supposed to get rid of extra carbs and turn them into fat. So it makes sense that if you're eating a bunch of extra calories and a lot of them are carbs, then you're going to be converting more of them into fat. So you might be thinking, uh-oh, looks like sugar is going to cause a lot of weight gain, right? If de novo lipogenesis is doubling, that's like a big amount, right? But interestingly, they found no relationship between the amount of de novo lipogenesis and participants' BMI, or percent body fat. So that's an interesting first hint that de novo lipogenesis is not actually doing much to your body fat. And so for some pretty exciting numbers, when I saw this, I like, my jaw dropped and I was so excited. I love when the results of these studies are just so validating. So on the maintenance diet, they had about 240 grams total of carbs, and their baseline rate of de novo lipogenesis while they're eating maintenance number of calories was about 1.6 grams per day. So using those 240 grams of carbs that they were eating a day on their maintenance diet, they were able to produce 1.6 grams of fat per day. So on the overfeeding diet, they ate 375 grams of carbs. And from those 375 grams of carbs, they produced a whopping 3.7 grams of fat per day on average. And that ranged from 2 grams to 10 grams. So the maximum amount of fat that any of their participants produced in a day was 10 grams. So now let me break that down in a way that actually matters to you because who cares about the number of grams of fat hanging around your bloodstream? The average was only 30 calories a day of fat that they produced from the 500 extra calories of sugar that they ate. And those 30 calories are equal to about 0.8% of a pound per day. 0.8%! That's not even 1% of a pound. So in order to gain one pound of fat from overeating 500 calories of sugar a day plus another 500 calories of fat, they would need to eat that way for about 115 days or about four months just to put on one pound of fat from overeating enough extra sugar but to put on one pound of fat a week. So instead of one pound of fat a week, as you would expect from CISO and from people who talk about your ability to convert sugar to fat, you instead put on one pound every four months. Yeah. And that de novo lipogenesis is actually based on all of the carbs in their body, not just the extra sugar they were given. So let's say we have someone who ate about 2,000 calories, and on the overfeeding diet they were given 3,000 calories. Half of those calories came from carbs. So they were eating 1,500 calories of carbs, but they still only produced 30 calories worth of fat from all those carbs in a day. So de novo lipogenesis ain't really doing jack squat. I'll say it, keep it PG. But wait a minute. These subjects have to be gaining weight somehow, right? They're eating all this extra sugar and fat and just a lot of extra calories, they have to be gaining weight, right? Well, yes, they're not magical. There's still going to be some weight gained from overeating, obviously, but the question is where that weight comes from. And the answer is fat. You store fat on your body. When you eat fat, you store fat. You burn some of it off if you're lucky, but usually not that much, especially if you're overeating. These participants had a fat balance of about six 120 calories a day. So that means they had 620 extra calories of fat just floating around their bloodstream at the end of the day because they ate more than they expended. And interestingly, they only burned 45% of the total fat they ate. And so thanks to that fat in their bloodstream, they were putting on about one-fifth of a pound a day. So in five days, they would gain a pound because of all that fat floating around. So just to summarize what we have so far, so we're on the same page before the next super cool results, they ate 3,000 calories a day. 1,500 of those were carbs. About 1250 of those were fat. From those carbs, they only made an extra 30 calories of fat a day. And in the end, they're left over with 620 calories of fat floating around. So you have 1500 carbs, 1250 fat that they're fed, and then they're left with 620 fat. But what happened to all the carbs that did not get turned into fat, you might be asking? And the answer is they were burned right off. So the participants burned off an average of 90% of the carbohydrates they ate in a day. So only half their diet was carbohydrates, but they still burned off 90% of it. So that means all of the calories that are still hanging around their body at the end of the day, getting turned into extra body weight, was from the fat. And so 90% of the carbs are burned off and used for energy, and then an extra 10% remained. So the question is, what happened to those if they didn't get burned off and they didn't get turned into fat? And I have some answers for this in my other videos, because these researchers for the current study did not talk about this. but. Some of the ways that carbs get burned off is through just metabolism, costs quite a bit of energy, you can poop carbs out, super fun, you can store them as glycogen, and so ultimately only 2% of the total carbs they ate got turned into fat. So those carbs are not going straight to their waistlines, the sugar is not 
making them fat. It's the fat that's doing that. You can see from this and many other studies that when you eat fat, it really sticks around your body and your body focuses on storing it because it's very efficient to store. You don't have to do much to turn dietary fat into body fat because it's already in the form it needs to be, essentially. Whereas with carbs, it's very energetically expensive or inefficient to turn carbs into fat because it's just a waste of your energy, essentially, is how you can think of it. And so your body preferentially burns carbs. It prefers to use carbs as fuel, and when it gets fat in the system, when it has enough carbs to fuel its activity, it stores that fat. And here's a plot that I love. This is the kind of plot I should print out and put on my wall because it's just beautiful. So this is all how much extra they have. So when the bars are at zero, it means they have enough to maintain their weight, essentially. And so they ate a lot of extra calories, and at the end of the day, they had a lot of those calories left over. And pretty much all of those calories were made up of fat, as you can see from the fat bars here. So they have a ton of extra fat hanging out in their system, but hardly any extra carbs, even though carbs were the single biggest contributor to their calorie intake. The little tiny hats you see on the fat bars are the amount of fat that was created by turning carbs into fat. So that amount of de novo lipogenesis is so tiny, like it's literally so tiny you have to like squint to see the amount of fat that's being contributed to your body by de novo lipogenesis. So one question is why do we even do it if it doesn't actually contribute to fat that we can put on our bodies? And I imagine one reason for it is that you need a small, small amount of fats to function, so your organs need fat, like small amounts for your membranes, you need it for your brain, small amounts of fat are important, you need to get some fat in your diet. But let's say you're not able to get fat in your diet because you're a hunter-gatherer and you're subsisting on potatoes and mangoes or something, then it makes sense that your body would be able to produce a small number of grams of fat just to cover the essential portions you need until you can get fat again. So it's probably like an emergency system that helps you get fats literally just to survive, but not enough that you're going to be able to actually store any on your body as extra, unless you're eating a ton of extra carbs, like 10,000 plus, and still we don't know if it would produce a significant amount of fat. But some of you might still be thinking, well, I still don't like de novo lipogenesis, even if it's small, and I don't want to eat more carbs because I don't want to be turning a bunch of them into fat. And fine, that's reasonable. But a very fun result from this paper is they found that de novo lipogenesis was actually very strongly correlated with fat intake to the same exact level as carb intake. So if you want to avoid de novo lipogenesis, eating more fat isn't really going to help unless you're literally eating no carbs, so you don't have any carbs to turn into fat. But turns out it's not just carbs that stimulates de novo lipogenesis. And for some other interesting notes on this, there was a difference in de novo lipogenesis between the obese and the lean subjects on the control diet. So when they were eating at their maintenance calories, people who were obese actually had higher rates of de novo lipogenesis. But when they were on the overfeeding diets, there was no more difference. So the obese and the lean subjects look very similar in terms of the percentage of carbs that they were turning into fat. And there were lots of individual differences in the rates of de novo lipogenesis, both on the maintenance and the overfeeding diets, but people really like to say that we're all special snowflakes and we all need different diets and we all have different rates of all these physiological processes, but with this study, remember the maximum amount of fat they produced in a day, even with all their individual differences, was 90 calories. So really, even people who are really high on de novo lipogenesis still are not producing a significant quantity of fat that would really contribute to their body weight. So this study shows us what happens on a standard American diet. So macronutrient ratios that are generally what the average person eats in the U.S., which is ultimately a pretty high fat diet. So 50% carbs, 40% fat is it's a very high fat diet compared to a lot of other cultures, especially more traditional diets. And so what this means for you is if you are eating a generally normal diet, it's not the sugar that's making you fat, it's the fat that's making you fat. But there is a caveat. You can't just eat your normal diet and then add a bunch of sugar and expect not to gain weight because you're still eating a bunch of fat. So what happens if you eat your normal diet and you add sugar on top of that is you're going to burn off all that sugar and all the carbs you eat and you're going to store the, more of the fat that you were already eating. So what your body's gonna do is gonna say, oh boy, carbs are here, I'm going to burn through all those for my energy needs, and now I have more fat to keep afterwards. So the real key to harnessing the joys of our inefficiency in converting carbs to fat is to not eat so much fat, because every gram of fat you eat essentially could be converted into body fat. So unfortunately, this does not mean you can just add a bunch of sugar to your normal diet and not expect to gain weight. I wish it were that easy, but this is a very good argument for eating a high carb diet because essentially the amount of fat you can put on is largely limited by the amount of fat you eat. So if you eat like 
3,000 calories of carbs and only 200 calories of fat, you can only really gain 200 calories a day. I have other studies looking more directly at high carb diets and what happens to carbs when you binge on them specifically and not both carbs and fat, so check those out if you're interested. So this study is really good at answering the question of where does your body weight come from when you overeat? And there are other studies that show how to prevent that from happening. So I have another one planned, which involves what happens when you overeat on starch versus sugar. So stay tuned for that. If you like this video, please give it a share. It would help me out a lot or a like or subscribe. And if you really want to support me in making more videos, check out my Patreon. I'll put the link below. Thanks so much for watching and see you next time.